We are here today to talk about the Young Dairy Leaders Institute. Thanks so much for joining me. Uh, the Young Dairy Leaders Institute is a unique nationwide leadership program aimed at young adults that are ready to advance their leadership involvement in the dairy industry and in their communities. So I am Jody Hoynowski, Holstein Foundation Programs Manager, and I'm going to be leading this session today. Uh, you can feel free to enter questions uh, along the way as we walk through the presentation, uh, and then we'll take uh, time at the end to answer your questions. The Holstein Foundation is the organization behind YDLI. Uh, the Holstein Foundation was established actually back in 1989. Uh, the Holstein Foundation uh, is a namesake of the Holstein Association. They put up the seed money to, to start the organization. Uh, but the great thing about our foundation is that we are open to uh, people involved with all breeds of dairy cattle. We are a nonprofit organization, a 501c3, a charitable nonprofit organization. And our vision is a dairy industry with vibrant leadership. So our programs focus on everything from youth to young adults, and uh, the Young Dairy Leaders Institute is really our cornerstone program uh, with targeting young adults. So why does the Holstein Foundation feel YDLI is important? Uh, we are facing great challenges in the dairy industry. I'm sure it's no secret to any of you uh, today that the amount of farms, um, the number of farms is decreasing. Um, at, at quite a rapid rate throughout the U.S. And the co consumer questions are also escalating at a pretty high rate. So the need for leaders has really never been greater. And YDLI addresses uh, the need with a unique niche. Uh, we're national in scope. Uh, so we take applicants from all over the country, and in fact, um, usually even a few international participants. Um, we also work with the participants to practice what you learn. You're held accountable and you report back on your learning. Um, another uh, unique aspect, I think, if you've ever talked to any of alumni, um, is the network that you build um, through the YDLI participation. YDLI is for young adults ages 22 to 45. That's who can apply for the program. Um, I will say a common question I get is, okay, um, you know, what, what do you recommend? What age range do you recommend I apply at? Um, my personal advice is uh, to get a little work experience first before you apply for YDLI. Say you just graduated college um, and, you're, and you're in the workforce. I get at least a year or two or three or four even uh, experience under your belt, and I think it will help you be more comfortable um, with your career so that you can really open your mind to everything we do and talk about in YDLI as a greater leader within the industry. Uh, we do invite dairy producers and allied industry members to apply for the program. Um, allied industry, that could be anybody in education, sales, marketing, um, but really we're just looking for people with a passion for the dairy industry. We accept up to 75 applicants in each YDLI class. And this is our ninth class coming up here. Uh, we will also consider international applicants, um, English-speaking international applicants for the program. Um, finally, just a note that we do not accept siblings or spouses in a class together. Um, this is a one element that makes YDLI a little bit unique. Um, but we really try and focus on you as an individual when you participate in this program. There's individual assignments, and we want you um, to stretch yourself and meet more people. So with regard to what is involved in YDLI, we often describe YDLI as a three-phase program. And those three phases take place over a 12-month period. Some of the key elements are interactive classroom sessions, real-world applications for what you learn in the classroom, countless networking opportunities, and finally, I think what a lot of people will talk about, um, alumni of the program, is stepping out of your comfort zone. Uh, we will push you to do things that you never dreamed you could. 
So let's take a look at the three phases. So first, YDLI phase one. That is an on-site meeting with your class. So class nine phase one program will be February 25th through the 28th of 2015 in beautiful Phoenix, Arizona. Um, so this is a new location for this class. We've been in Albuquerque, New Mexico the last few classes, and that's treated us well. Um, but we're, we're excited about the move to Phoenix. It's beautiful weather there year-round, especially beautiful the end of February when uh, those of you from other parts of the country are buried in snow and cold. Um, it's spring training time for baseball fans. It's a, it's a great golf getaway that time of year. So there's a lot of exciting things that brought us to Phoenix um, in addition to YDLI. So during our phase one program, we'll focus on individual leadership skills. Again, it is an individual program in YDLI, and phase one is really about understanding who you are and where you want to become as a leader. So next we have YDLI phase two. Phase two is that 12-month period between meetings where you will have monthly homework assignments. You'll work with a peer group and a mentor to report on your progress on those monthly assignments. And a lot of them will focus on consumer communication. We'll ask you to do things like send a letter um, to your uh, a media contact and introduce yourself as a, a resource for the dairy industry. Um, you'll be asked to do a consumer interview to understand how consumers make purchasing decisions. Uh, you'll also make a community presentation and develop an, your own advocacy project, which we'll talk more about a little later. Uh, phase three, so that's the final meeting with your class. We'll meet at the same place again, Phoenix, Arizona, February 24th through the 27th, 2016. And during phase three, that's where we're going to focus on group leadership and influence. So really about um, be leading a team and how to influence people that you're working with. So digging a little deeper into some of the workshops that we'll have during our phase one and three meetings. Uh, phase one, um, the most popular topic that we cover is media training. Um, and this is really set up to help you answer tough questions and no longer fear and run away from the tough questions you might get from consumers, but to deal with them with confidence, with personal stories um, that, that can leave a lasting impact on your audience. Um, so there's, uh, it's pretty much a day-long media training session that we have with on-camera practice. In addition to that, we'll be holding workshops that will help you develop core leadership skills. Uh, we'll have presentation training, how to give impactful presentations. Um, and we're still putting finishing touches, but I think uh, we might even have a program this class for phase one on stress management. I imagine uh, that might resonate with some of you. Um, phase three workshops. Um, the most popular workshop there during phase three is dealing with conflict management and learning to deal with conflict in a positive way. It's acknowledging that we all have conflict in our lives, whether it be personal or in a workplace, and, and not to be afraid of it, that it can be a healthy thing. Uh, oftentimes relationships come out stronger when you're able to work through that conflict. And we, we base a lot of that conversation around um, the animal rights and animal welfare discussion and have uh, some debate, some opposing viewpoints, and use that as a platform for how we talk about conflict management. Additional things we'll talk about uh, for phase three would be advanced communications training, as well as um, setting your sights on becoming a board member and group leadership skills, again, how to effectively lead a team. We'll talk about affecting public policy and also how to have influence. So then just taking a step back to phase two, um, this is uh, where I mentioned you would develop your own advocacy project. Um, so some examples of what some folks have done in the past for their advocacy project during phase two. Uh, one is uh, promoting chocolate milk as a sports recovery drink at road races or local YMCA's. A popular one with YDLI participants is to visit a local classroom and provide an educational workshop promoting dairy products and our industry. Or finally, organize a dairy day at a retail store, school, or on the farm. 
And one thing we really talk about with these projects is not just make it a one-shot deal. Um, make it something that's repeatable, that, that somebody, you know, once you move on, can step in and carry on your legacy. Really try to make something um, that has a significant and lasting impact. So I mentioned this a little bit before, but I thought this uh, quote summed it up very nicely, um, just relating to the networking and friendships that you'll gain as a participant, participant in the YDLI program. Melissa Sankey um, from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, graduated in our last class, and she says, attending YDLI was one of the best decisions I have ever made, personally and professionally. Interacting with colleagues with the same passion for the dairy industry curated an even larger desire to remain an integral part of the industry. I feel blessed and fortunate to be a graduate of the program and to have made so many lifelong friends. Uh, you can imagine Facebook um, has really been a, a great thing for these YDLI classes. And I, it's great for me to see how everybody's cheering each other on throughout the program and the friendships that are uh, made and, and carried out long after the class graduates. Uh, so with that, we do have a YDLI class graduate on the line with us here today, uh, Jolene Griffin. She's from Schaumburg, Illinois. Uh, she's employed with Dairy Management, Inc. And uh, I'll turn it over to Jolene to share a little bit of insight from her personal experiences with the program. Great. Thank you, Jody, And good afternoon, everybody. Or I guess good morning for some of you who are on the West Coast. But I really appreciate the opportunity to be on the phone today to talk with you. I was just talking with Jody a few minutes before the webinar, and you know we were talking about a uh, uh, recent class, uh, the class eight of YDLI, and how passionate we we all are for this program, and how excited we are that we had the opportunity. So appreciate uh, the few minutes that I get to chat with you about the program, and hopefully answer some some questions if you have any from someone who has participated. As the daughter of dairy farmers and now someone who works for the National Dairy Checkoff, I um, really appreciated, appreciated the opportunity to connect with other folks in the industry like myself who either grew up on farms and went back to the farm or maybe went into communications avenues or are working with farmers and nutritionist uh, capabilities or with animal health companies, that type of thing. You know, I've, I've seen a lot of my friends and colleagues participate in YDLI in the past and, and always uh, wanted, to, wanted to join, and I'm glad that I applied a few years ago and was accepted because, as Jody mentioned um, in one of, her, one of her comments, is, you know, it really helped me to step out of my comfort zone. I think all of us do a nice job of promoting the dairy industry through conversations we have with you know, our friends who aren't involved in the dairy industry or through social media or through helping with on-farm events or that type of thing. But YDLI uh, introduced me to some new avenues of how I can tell my family's dairy story. So, for example, um, you know, I had not connected with the media in my area, and I had not connected with our representatives from Congress. So just opening some of those doors has really helped me connect with those people in my area who are telling our stories or who are making some decisions that, that really in, impact my family and, and the dairy industry's future. So I appreciate uh, being put on the spot and being uh, forced out of my comfort zone, but with, with the encouragement of the, of the YDLI um, uh, program. You know, another thing that I really enjoyed about the program was uh, taking a step back and learning about myself. I know we, you know, in school we, we do a lot of different tests of who are we, that type of thing, but I think, you know, as someone who's been out of school for a number of years, you really see who you are as a person and you're able to take that information and build programs and build projects through your YDLI experience that really um, captivate and expand on those strengths and help you make those connections with consumers. It was also great to have that network of, okay, if I want to you know, uh, bring in dairy products to an event or if I want to reach out to this person, how do I do it? You know, Having those resources behind you to say, okay, you know what, 
this avenue didn't work, but okay, how, how can I get my goals accomplished? So having probably that sounding board um, and, and others who are in the, same, in the same boat and trying to make those same connections really helped. And then I love that um, on the previous slide we saw a quote from, from one of my classmates and actually a, a now a dear friend of mine, Melissa, um, and she made a comment that, you know, she really appreciated meeting people and building those friendships. And, and it's funny because when we left phase one, I made the comment to one of my colleagues here that I felt like I had 50 new friends. 50 new Facebook friends, 50 uh, new friends in, in real life. And it's been really, it's been really neat, really cool to watch all of us rally around each other, you know, over the past few years as people have accepted new jobs or had children or as they have uh, implemented their YDLI plans and projects. You know, we've all, we've all backed each other up. We've all, you know, offered our advice or offered our congratulations when, when events went over really well. So um, I'm someone who really enjoys making friendships and building relationships. So I think that's been one of the best experiences for me is having those connections and those friends all across the country because there are people who are in the same, the same shoes as me and who are experiencing the same things. And, and ultimately, we're all wanting to better the dairy industry for, for our children or our nieces and nephews. So um, I really enjoyed my YDLI experience. And, and that, you know, if there's time, I will stay on for the remainder of the webinar and answer any questions. But feel free to connect with me later if you want a, a, you know, a personal, it, you know, if you want to chat with me or if you want, you know, just um, some advice about the program. I'm sure Jody would be happy to provide my contact information. Awesome. Thanks so much, Jolene. So, uh, like Jolene said, we'll come back um, for in a little bit for your questions. Um, but let's touch base on a, a question I'm sure some of you are wondering about, which is uh, the funding and the cost that might uh, be associated with attending YDLI. So, the Holstein Foundation, as I mentioned earlier, is a nonprofit organization. Um, we are a fundraising organization. We uh, couldn't do what we do without the generous support of our donors and sponsors. So with that, we are able to cover program development, speaker, and meal costs for the program. For participants' responsibility, there is a $500 registration fee, which covers both phases of the program. So you pay the one-time $500 fee up front, and that covers your participation in the entire program. Uh, you are responsible for your own air transportation and a shared hotel room. Um, so for air transportation, um, if you have, uh, say, a friend that's got some frequent flyer miles or maybe you have some frequent flyer miles building up, um, this is a great time to try and use those. Um, shared uh, uh, So I should also mention Phoenix is a major hub. That's another benefit of our move to Phoenix. Um, Check airlines like Southwest. Um, they don't use uh, a lot of those sites that pull different information together. So make sure you check out all those options. I think JetBlue goes to Phoenix. So a lot of different options. Make sure you look at all of them uh, for your air transportation to get the best price. Um, shared hotel rooms. So we do our best to negotiate a, a good rate for the hotel. Um, I think uh, our rate is one. 120 or 130. I don't have that information right in front of me right now. Um, that's the total cost of the hotel room. We do arrange roommates for you to help save on hotel room costs and help you meet new people too. So to give you a little sample budget of what you can expect your cost to be to attend YDLI, phase one, you would pay the registration fee up front of $500. Let's just throw out, for instance, that your flight might be $500. I think you can probably do better than that. Some of you, I'm sure, are pretty savvy. Um, hotel costs, I'd budget $300. Uh, then again, phase three, your flight and hotel, another $500 flight and $300 hotel. So uh, my math comes to a $2,100 total for your attendance. Um, one thing I'd like to plug here is that you can seek sponsors for your participation, um, especially those of you that are dairy producers or have 
dairy producer family background that you grew up with, ask for sponsorship support from your co-op, from your feed company, anybody you do business with, don't be bashful to ask them for support. Um, there are also some scholarships out there for YDLI um, through different, um, uh, whole, like Wisconsin Holstein Organization, I know they offer some scholarships for young adults in education. Um, Pennsylvania Center for Dairy Excellence and the Dairymen's Association um, is fronting some scholarship money for YDLI uh, participants. Um, we also have a couple of scholarships. Um, one is the Kane Scholarship that we have for Southeastern um, dairy producer participants that could be supported by the Kane Scholarship. We're also starting a new scholarship that would be open to dairy producers nationwide in the name of Horace Backus. So we're fundraising for that right now, but I think the plan is we'll be able to offer one full-ride scholarship for the next YDLI class. Um, so I don't want you all to be um, too stammered by the amount in that budget. It is, a, it is an investment, but I think it's one that, that people like Jolene will tell you has been well worth it. Um, so I mentioned our sponsors um, that help make YDLI possible. Another key element I need to acknowledge is our advisory committee. We have a volunteer advisory committee that helps serve as mentors uh, for YDLI class members. The current advisory committee includes Brett Barless from Hillmark, California, Frank Cunningham from Shavertown, Pennsylvania, Laura Daniel from Cobb, Wisconsin, uh, who you just heard from, Jolene Griffin from Schaumburg, Illinois. She's brand new to the committee. Josh Cushion lives in North Prairie, Wisconsin. Matt Knuckles from Beaver Dam, Virginia. And Catherine Walker from Albany, Oregon. These folks bring a lot of dedication and excitement and experience to the program. They help you put the program together. They help mentor the class members throughout the program. And they also help keep our alumni network strong. I think that's an important part to remember once you graduate YDLI. It's not over. Um, we continue to communicate with you um, and engage you as YDLI alumni. So take a look at the timeline. Uh, applications are due August 1st. That's a received by deadline. So we need to receive your applications here by August 1st. Selected participants will be notified by October 1st. I actually usually try and time that around World Dairy Expo um, so that everybody will have received their uh, letters of notification before World Dairy Expo. Uh, then the full registration fee is due November 15th. That's the $500 registration fee. Um, and we actually have a, it set up on our website that you can pay that online safe and secure and easy with a credit card. Um, and then finally, make your travel plans to attend. Um, again, I, I mentioned earlier, take some time to enjoy Phoenix um, if you plan on attending. Um, we do also plan pre-tours for phase one and phase three. So the, if you looked at the calendar, the dates go from a Wednesday night through a Saturday night program. Typically, what we do is plan a pre-tour on that Wednesday for both phase one and phase three to get you out to see some of the countryside, get you on farms, or some of the cool things to do in the area. So keep that in mind, too. We will be planning a pre-tour for phase one and phase three on that Wednesday. And then a reminder on the time commitment, phase one is February 25th through the 28th, 2015 in Phoenix, Arizona. Phase two, you'll have monthly community assignments. And then phase three is February 24th through the 27th, 2016, back in Phoenix, Arizona. So with that, I'd be happy to help answer any questions you might have. And uh, Lindsay Warden is here with me. She helps me with the program. And Lindsay's going to kind of help moderate your questions for us. Our first question we got from um, somebody on the webinar is, is there an interview process? So no, the applications that we receive are reviewed by an anonymous review committee. Um, so it is decided based on your application alone. And I want to thank you all for your time.
for participating in this webinar today about our Young Dairy Leaders Institute. Feel free to contact me if you have any questions. We also have more information on our website, www.holteenfoundation.org. Uh, you can see my email and my phone number here if you want to follow up with me. I appreciate your time.